So it's well known that the dragon curve can be folded from a strip of paper. It turns out some other fractal curves can as well. I'd like to show how to fold the Sierpinski arrowhead curve and also the tur dragon curve. First, reviewing how the uh, dragon curve works. So you start with a line segment, you make two copies, arrange them at right angles, make two copies of that, arranged as shown, then you iterate, and as you progress, it starts to look kind of dragony. Okay, to fold this, we start with a strip of paper. We're going to fold it in half, like so, get it even. And then we're going to fold it a second time. Each time we fold, we double the number of line segments. We're going to fold a third time. And then a fourth time, since 2 to the 4th is 16, we'll now have 16 segments. We're going to unfold that, trying to get 90 degree angles, so there's our first iteration. And go a little further, there's the second iteration of the dragon curve. And if we keep going, there's the uh, third iteration. And finally we have the the fourth iteration. If you want to check that, we can uh, just lay it on top of this guy. See, so you roll it over. Okay. Now, moving on to the Sierpinski arrowhead curve, you may not be familiar with this one. You start with one line segment, triple it, arrange it like this. These are 120 degree angles. You arrange three copies of that as shown, one facing out and two facing in. And as we iterate, it looks more and more like the Sierpinski triangle. And after two more iterations after this, you can very much see the Sierpinski triangle character. I think this is a clever and very beautiful curve. And uh, the question then is how would you fold this? So let's go back to that generator here, and we see that one segment goes to three. If you think of this as your strip of paper, seen edge on, you need to fold one third this way and one third this way. So let's see if that works. I'm going to use a little bit bigger piece of paper here because it's easier with a larger piece. In this case, you'll see why in a moment. So we're going to fold the right third in, put a little mark so I can see where I was. Otherwise, it's kind of hard to judge that first one. And we're going to fold the left side in. OK. Now let's just do that again. I'll fold the right side in about a third of the way. Left side. About a third. Do that one more time. And these are getting kind of small and thick. That's why a smaller sheet of paper is a little harder. This one's 17 inches long. Regular one is 11 inches long. Until we'll just fold this part in. Push down hard. So 3 cubed is 27. We should have 27 segments. If we start to unfold that, trying to keep 120 degree angles, there's our first iteration. And go a little further, we get the uh, second iteration of the curve. Okay, something like that. And finally we get the third iteration. So that's all there is to, uh, to folding this curve. Try to get those angles right. And there's the third iteration of that curve. If you want to see more detail, you can combine more than one of these. So let me take two that I folded earlier. And these have to point inward. So it'll join like that. And one more joins like this. Now, if you're a math teacher and have a class with 27 students, you could join 27 of these, and that would really look cool. 
So that's the Sapinski arrowhead curve. Finally, I'm going to um, fold the Turdragon curve. In this case, as in the arrowhead curve, you have three segments, but they're not folded the same way, and the angles are 60 degrees. So if we iterate, it starts to look kind of dragony. So it's again, it's another type of dragon curve. So let's try the same type of folding. Let's start with our paper. Let's fold one third this way. Then the other third is going to fold that way. Again, here's a long strip. Um, so we start like this. Now this other third has to fold backwards in this case. Like so. And we're going to iterate that. There's the second one. And the second one. And finally a third iteration front and back. This is harder to maintain all the small angles with this one. So there's your first iteration. I'm going to show the second iteration and then uh, let's say something like this. You know, the ang angles need to be small. And uh, I'm just going to skip to when I folded earlier rather than fuss around with all those small angles. And it'll look something like this. So that's the Turdragon curve. If you'd like to see more of my work uh, on Facebook, you can go to Robert Fathauer Art, or you can look at robertfathauer.com and fractaldiversions.com. Thanks for watching.